hello, hello, and welcome to episode 16 of the Chocolate Bros. I'm Sam Riley. And I'm Zach Burrell. Yeah, and let, let's just get straight started. Uh, first, uh, Zach, you want to tell us about some upcoming events here? Uh, sure. So we are super excited. Uh, our newest local game store to pick up the game, and probably our, currently our most successful, we'd say, right now. They're picking up Steam nicely. Depends on the day, but yeah, they're doing pretty well. Right, uh, Sunshine Games. Uh, they just announced their own uh, series, their championship series. Uh, it is based around Final Fantasy X, like the theme of ten. So each event is named after a summon uh, from the game. Uh, we have a bunch of dates. I'll just kind of list, list through them. Uh, there's one each month uh, up until October, where there's going to be two, where there's a last chance qualifier and then the uh, actual day itself. Yep. So we've got one on May 27th, June 23rd. we got July 28th. August 26th, September 23rd, and then October 27th and 28th are the Anima Last Chance Qualifier and the Final Fantasy X Invitational Championship. Yeah. So they're working on a point system. So if you win the event, you get an automatic invite. Uh, if you want win one of the events, sorry. Uh, you also get 15 points. Um, then second place is 12, and there's the point system going down to the top 16. Yeah, I think first uh, and second at the end of the season also gets like $200 or something. Something like that, yeah. So yeah. you racking up points is important, but also if you win an event, that's also important. So there's incentive to play in more than one event as well. It's it's not like you qualify once and then that's like the main prize and like that's yeah. all you want to do. There's more incentive to you know rack up points, do well in every tournament. I don't know what they're going to do about maybe passing down invitations if like the same person wins multiples, but I'm sure um, that's how it'll work. Yeah. It's something like that, yeah. yeah. So super excited about that. That would be sweet. Uh, it's a cool, like I know California, they have their meta potion uh, circuits and um, a lot of their tournaments and stores work together yeah. uh, to make kind of, you know, something to work towards through like a season. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of cool that we're going to get something like that down here. Uh, it's only one store, but hey, I mean, it's a start, right? Yeah, and I think I think uh, Chris Lancaster is the the man behind it. I think that he he wants to network with stores, so I don't think that's out of the option. Right, a right. Thing, especially probably reach reach up to Jacksonville, reach down to Miami. Um, so I know also just a shout out to if you're watching this from like the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. I think this Saturday they're having their first uh, win a box at their cool stuff. So yep. if you guys are in that area, definitely check that out. Um, go, uh, <clears throat> go there, play against Andy Carmona, the man himself. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then we have uh, Toronto coming up too, right? Yes, uh, Toronto okay. is not this weekend, but the next. No, yeah. correct. Something like that, and then and Kansas is soon after that. But more importantly, at least if you're on the uh, need to hurry up and do something, uh, if you plan on going to San Jose, you need to register like right now or yesterday. I think they only have a few spots mm -hmm. left. So yeah, they're <clears> interesting, they interesting enough that they are two cups out and they're going to fill up. Right. Um, so they're also cool. in California, though, which is a, a lot of locals there. So pretty that's much true. everybody who plays in California has probably got a ticket to that. That's true. Um, so what we want to do real quick with this episode is we have some viewer questions. Um, and yes. we've been kind of putting them off. So we're going to just answer a bunch of viewer questions real quick right now. Um, we're just going to shoot through them, and then we'll get started with some lists and what our normal stuff. <clears throat> the first question is, why are ice fire decks doing so well right now um in particular the viewer wanted to know our listener wanted to know uh in comparison to opus 4 why are they doing so well in opus 5 that okay uh well the first initial thought is an addition of orphan just for ice in general cards great sure, yeah. uh even we even see it uh find success in dual color decks which i know at the beginning when we first talked about the card we were a little skeptical if it could really fit into anything but mono ice but it's really proved itself like that uh, like that uh the standard unit deck yeah, that was the, sick. Uh, the ice wise standard <laughs> units, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I uh I talked to Joshua about that list. Um he uh he actually had been hitting me up about like how to build the monster deck prior and, and built it and tested it and actually he actually lost to that deck. Really? Okay. Yeah. He said That's that it seemed extremely powerful. Uh, I mean the guy if you if they can't answer your warrior of light, all your guys have first strike, which is kind of just insane. Yeah. So Anyway. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know that I would say Ice Fire specifically is more popular, although, of course, uh, the most recent, you know, Spring Cup champion, our man over in the EU, winning with that. I think a lot of the lists I've seen since then that are Ice Fire are maybe, like, five cards different than that list. Like, it's yeah. kind of, like, the basis and the core, although that's typically been the case since Opus 4. Like, yeah. that hasn't changed a whole lot in Opus 5, I don't think. Uh, I think it's just good but there's a lot of like controlly decks going around so like if there's a deck that can take early advantage and hit you a couple times tempo you out it, it can make it awkward for like the slower decks to kind of 
get going, I think. Yeah, what if there's um, just, what do you think? What if there's just this giant conspiracy by Chris Matiski um, <clears throat> to like get people to stop playing cards that are good against it and like you know that man hates astrologin. Uh, and it just that he he posts this thing about how bad astrologin is, and then all of a sudden you see no mono water lists with it, and ice is doing extremely well. I don't know. <laughs> Seems like a I conspiracy mean, to me. Yeah, well, if people are listening, that's their fault. <laughs> Still <laughs> no, think astrologin yeah. is going to play. Yeah. So in, in addition, I think that um, well, one, there's just a lot more events happening right now. There's we're being slammed with events compared to when we were in Opus Four. Um, yep. There's just a I mean, local stores are running their own qualifiers. We have actually have regionals like every weekend, <clears throat> as opposed to I think we had zero regional type events during Opus Four. Um, yeah, it was slow. Yeah, so we're just being slammed with lists. So if you're seeing a bunch of ice, I think that's just uh, like I think that there's not necessarily more ice because I think Opus Four ended with a lot of ice. If you right, right. Opus was, Four absolutely <laughs> like. People and realize it, how good that six engine was, and it was kind of just like the fallback good deck, right, for us. Yeah, Definitely. and it won the Octagon Open. Um, uh, Mono Ice did beating uh, Ice Fire. Lightning. Ice Lightning, because he was on Ice Lightning at the time. Robert Fields was still on Ice Fire. Uh, Toby was also on Mono Ice. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I think I think right after that event, um. Uh, Jamie won some events playing Mono Ice 2, playing that exact list, or maybe like a couple cards off. So I, th- I think it's maybe just a, like an a information overload of all these these new events. With right, it's, with not, it's not necessarily that it's played more, it's just we're seeing it more. Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, it. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't think that it's it's um, necessarily that just being played more. But I, I think that, that you're right about Orphan being a strong card. Uh, Thaler Mage? Or the whatever, how you pronounce it? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, 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 that the, two, awesome. the two CP guy that you discard card, that card's great. Um, <clears throat> so that could be a, a huge deal. Um, the fact that it's a standard unit is also probably pretty good. And the um, Edward backup, I think, is appearing quite a bit too. The new one that when enters, they discard, and like if you have another one, you can counter a summon, which is pretty well, yeah, sweet. Well, actually, yeah, actually, yeah, having another way to counter a summon other than Celeste is pretty good. Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, um, oh, in particular, just, just as a random note, because Diablos. Um, is really good, and it's really good in the ice decks. Um, yes. Another viewer question, is Minwoo a fair card? Um, isn't <laughs> its existence stopping decks like Mono Fire from being played as much? Uh, yeah, it's definitely, at one point in the game, stopping Mono Fire from being played as much. That being said, I, I don't think Minwoo's in 90% of the water decks we're seeing. Really, honestly, not, yeah. Yeah, not even the Mono Water decks are playing Minwoo. So no, it's it's not stopping it. Um, you have decks that are like dedicated to ping, um, like the deck that uh, Dan and Thomas uh, played um, and won their events with. I mean, yeah, like sure, it. it can mill, but like it's it's dedicated to like pinging things off with like Al Cid and and Brigdia. Um, a lot of the Cactar, the mill decks are doing really well right now. Um, those mm-hmm. are all dealt with pings, and then you have you have but those decks are just playing archers or Sephiroths to like handle that minute right. if it comes up. But only one the, archer, right? Like a lot right, of them are just one archer, single archer. Like, eh, just in case like, I run into the person playing Minwoo. But. The, the person playing Minwoo, because yeah, I, I don't see Minwoo being played much at all right now. I think uh, there's been a lot of posts I've seen too. Uh, I'd say one or two a month, probably, about people who play Mono Lightning asking, "How do you guys beat Minwoo as Lightning?" It's like, well, Lightning has a lot of you know power reduction and all that. Fire so, doesn't have access to that, so definitely, I think it's getting pushed out a little. But I don't think the good quote unquote good fire decks even really care that much like they're mainly just big dudes that like yeah. you have Z- things like zande like if if you if min was stopping that 9k you're in trouble anyway like if that 9k isn't big enough <laughs> uh you have things like the new the pain train vermilion uh bird um fire's just kind of big red right like that's been the term used uh it's a, kind of a magic meta term but um i don't think that we would see many more ping decks. I think lightning does the chunk, like combination chunk damage uh, better. Like okay. if you're going to play a deck mm-hmm. that's not scared of Minwoo and like if Minwoo is gone for some reason, like Lulu would be amazing. Cactor with Orlando would be amazing. Um, like the black mage Mobus one, like all lightning kind of capitalizes more off ping because it has a lot of those effects that say, well, if it's damaged, do a ton of damage or break it. Uh, whereas fires like, um, oh, also the other thing is lightning. A lot of it is, forward based so like you maybe damage them play orlando right you play this 9k kill your guy 
or I'll say you get two bodies. In fire, a lot of it's like sacrifice my backup to deal four thousand Q. Play this backup that once will deal five K to two guys, and then just stays here, doesn't break itself. Uh, so I yeah. think I definitely I don't think that it would necessarily change how fire decks are built, though it might. Uh, cards like maybe the heroic fury would be played a little more because like his four K on entry is kind of anemic. Uh, if it's you know if Minu is around and he, then he's just kind of an okay forward. Um. So I think, yes, it's probably pushing him out a little bit, but I don't think it's that big of a problem. I don't think we'd see too much change. Okay, so out of, I think I, think I looked at seven lists here, uh, three of them were playing Minwoo, uh, two of them had two, one of them had three. Mm -hmm. uh, so the odds the odds are, I guess, like, what, for like 40% or something like that, that you're going to play against a Minwoo, and depending if they even draw it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that Minwoo is a fun card, to be fair. Um, probably not, but I mean, you probably won't catch me playing a water deck without it. Um, yeah, it's I just mean, a nice safety net, right? Like it's it's it is, cool yeah. to play and like protect like, yourself. Anyone who's like one of the really frustrating things about this game is like when you go to hand size and you have to play forward into your lightning player or discard. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you have to play like your weakest forward because otherwise they're just gonna like I'll sit it, and then if you. If you play your weakest forward now, they'll all sit it into a Lua, which is gross. Yep. Yeah, if you try to overvalue them by playing like that Luma, they'll play their idea. Like, yep. It just seems really good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, the the next question, which was kind of a follow up question, to that is if we if we thought that cards like that should be restricted, and my or gut banned. reaction or banned, my gut reaction is zero bans. Um, mm -hmm. I would be fine with restricted cards. I don't think there needs to be a restrict, uh, re restricted list, um, but I would be fine with it. Like, I think until we see something like, uh, if anybody's heard anything about Magic, the deck Cobblade, where it was just so dominant, like you were either playing it or you weren't winning. If, there's, if we ever get to a situation where there's one deck that no matter how you build any other deck can't compete with it, then you have to solve that problem somehow, identify what the problem is, and sure. either ban restrict a card. But until then, the game's fairly balanced. And like I said, even, like, they have to draw Minmu, which I guess if there's three, right, they're probably gonna draw one. But, like, if you really need to beat the card, you can splash Earth or Wind or whatever. Earth is pretty easy, because you, you get the whole Shantoto, um, Dataluma, Hecaton, whatever package you want from there. Um, yeah. Then we joke about putting in every deck. Uh, you also get Camel and I have to go find Chaos to be able to cast it. So, like, if you really want to beat it, you can Splash to beat it. But, like, I don't think it's pushing out enough strategies to warrant anything. And I think we have to wait until there's something that bad. Uh, if you, and if you disagree with me, just take a look at the chapter's ban list and why those cards were banned and compare that to kind of the power level of Minmu. And it's not quite, it's not quite uh, there yeah. yet. Yeah, I, so I went ahead and, like, just wait, 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 we were talking real quick made a quick list of the cards that I would restrict. <clears throat> and it's just based off, like, cards, whether how fun they are to play against, right? Can I, can I take a guess of what... How many did you have on the list? I, I did one for each color. Oh, one for each... Uh, I would say I'll sit for lightning, probably. Okay, um... um Midwood for water. So um, I'll, I'll sit is not, is not on there. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, I would have said Midwood Min for water. Midwood is there. Uh, funny enough, all these cards are backups. Let me give you a hint. All of them are backups oh, really? besides one, yeah. Uh, Shantota? Shantota's not on there, no. No? Um, I think it's. I think you kind of need three to stop aggro, but <clears throat> yeah. um, I didn't know if you were kind of thinking about power level and all that. So uh, if, no, if, interesting. If I'm going to be far off then. It's, it's, well, okay, actually, never. I forgot the wind. The wind one's also not. Uh, oh, it is. No, it is. It is. All right. So Red Mage uh, for fire, it's not, okay. it's not, it's not a busted card. It's just not fun to play against. Like, it's... Like first off, red would be the first, the last card or the last color I restrict a card from. Right. Um, also, yeah, that card like doesn't care about Minwoo. Like a lot of the sure, exactly. extra combat based. Well, like, imaginary it, brawler, like Tifa. Yeah, a, a lot of fire doesn't. Yeah. Um, I think Minwoo it, hurts it, more lightning than it does fire. Yeah. Something. Something I thought of earlier. It's not necessarily that it stops fire of the element from being good. I think it stops people from playing the type of fire they want to be playing. Like it's okay. they want to be yeah. comboing like these chunks of damage and like oh this is really fun but really the good decks are the ones that just like below past your guys make them all like mill block kind of thing. Yeah, so the cards I would restrict are Red Mage for fire. Mm -hmm. Ice, it, ice. I think the only like super oppressive card is Lock. Um, 
I think that like if you get rid of your opponent's lock, like you just get a, you have a chance. Um, <laughs> and when they open into like the sets or just alien said locked combo, you just tend to not have a chance. I uh, yeah. I think that Riku. <laughs> You can't really restrict it because, well, I guess you could play the other copies for the for the mug effect, but Riku is just not a fun card to play against. Like it's just not fun to lose that way. Um, so basically, my cards are cards that just aren't fun to play against. Uh, my Earth card was actually Star Sibyl. I think that it drastically like changes the way you should build decks right now. Right. Um, spoiler: basically, you should all be playing Star Sibyl in all of your decks. Um, I think it's just like. I mean, I thought Shantoto was was good. I think Star Civil is that was like when you guys were talking about best card last week. I just was surprised that you went with Cam, although it has to do with Shantoto, and he went. And with it's Shant- kind of like the payoff Shantoto. of Star Civil, right? Like, yeah, I think like I think a Star Civil just enables both of those cards just to be so good. In fact, maybe Cam is not even playable, or it would still be playable, but it's not nearly as good without Star Civil. Um, I mean, we, we want to see some of the decks that we yeah. see now. Star Civil didn't exist. But. Uh, for Lightning, um, I, you know, I originally put Red Mage because it's not fun to play against, but the, the actual least fun to card to play against against Lightning is certainly Alua. Like, it's just... It's just bonkers. It is It is absolutely, like, in the tier, like, one cards, I think. Um, it's just not fun to play against. I When I'm building decks now, I'm sp- specifically building to be Alua. Because uh, Mono Lightning will be the most played deck always. It just It, it is the way it is. You're going to play against Mono Lightning in your next event, I promise. That's the way it is. Um, I think that uh, Minwu, yeah, I would restrict Minwu if, again, if they force restrictions. I don't think that any of these cards need right. to be restricted. I agree. Uh, I would probably restrict Chaos uh, for Dark. Um, again, okay. I, I think like the, the monster deck that we are playing before was like really, really, really good. Um, and you had to have like two Chaos in the deck. I guess you can have, no, yeah. I, guess, I guess they had, they played like one Chaos, one Cosmos. Well, you could play Cam to go find it, and then... Well, okay, back, the... Back then, they were, version, they, right? they were playing, yeah, one Chaos, one... One of uh, each to be cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, there, there, there's incentives to doing so. Each one has its strength and weaknesses. Um, well, you also said you want to play two Chaos to fake I, the Kefka. I want to fake... No, I want to fake the Emperor. Or, but yeah. or the Emperor, right. Yeah. Um, so I would always play two Chaos, but I can see the reason for that. And for Light, I would definitely restrict Fasoya, although it is my favorite card. Uh, <laughs> I do think it, like, having... Th- having uh, the option of having three just makes the card way too good. And if you're not paying attention, Fosoy is winning a lot of events lately. I think um, it's unplayable at one, though, and restricted. Like, that's, that's fair, yeah. Building I mean, a whole it, deck around that strategy and not finding it, I don't these, think No, that's... I don't know. I just I disagree. I think these water decks could still win, like these mono water decks. I think, I think there's certainly, like, the ice, the water lightning deck would be less good, but the mono water decks are just... Nuts, man. I think he actually won this event I have opened, the, the Crystal Cup Ports Mouth one. Uh, second place, it looks like. Unless first oh, first and second. Too. Yeah, it was first and second. Oh, they both... Okay, I didn't realize they had Fusoya in the deck. Okay. Yeah, they're both they're both pretty similar. One had, like, Porums. They both had Viking. One's called one Where's Your like, Jill, so yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, so... Yeah, I, again, the, I would not restrict those cards, uh, so don't quote me on that. Um, yeah. There are some pros to restricting those cards, though, is that, like deck building becomes a little more innovative like you don't just jam three star civil if you ban if you restricted a card like orphan or Lalac, um you would have a little bit more diversity uh but maybe that's not true like maybe these mill decks are really cool maybe these like mono ice decks with like splashing water standard units it, like that's pretty cool so like even with these cards we're seeing innovation um, right, like every every week, I feel like there's at least one new kind of interesting list, even in like the top eight of like a actual event, like not just the locals where people are yeah. having fun, but it seems like there's always some kind of something being innovated right now, which is really cool. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't. Know. I, I was thinking like if you have to take the top five cards from each color other than fire, the top five, and ban them. Or at least restrict them in order to make fire, like mono fire, like tier one. That would be my guess. It, it's literally that big of a. Or just deficit. give fire some awesome cards. <laughs> yeah, let, like. Bring them up. Okay, here's an example. Like Emperor Zonde's restriction, just is nuts. Like why? Why it can only be played with fire cards? Like, like they they need to like look at those types of things. Like yeah. Like even small things. Like I I guess I don't know. It it just does seem like fire is. I would never restrict a card from fire. They'd right. have to, they'd have to make like King Moogle fire, 
<laughs> um, and then I would say that like people would just play five colors playing fire for King Moogle or whatever. But anyway. yeah, I brought up that one podcast what he did. It was yeah. Really dumb. <laughs> so anyway, um, next uh, one of the questions is like, how why is this mill deck doing well? Um, All right, so the elephant in the room, right? <laughs> yeah, the the lay like yeah. mill deck. It is what Zach and I have been playing a lot lately. Um, why is it doing well? Um, because your opponents because are Layak is a stupid card. Because your opponents are bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of times I do win. I don't think I've ever lost with the deck the first time I've played anybody with it. Exactly. Because yep. if they don't know, like when Angel came back to play, he he's played one week in the past like two months. Yeah. Uh, and he came hashtag back with a... WTF is Angel. Yeah. But uh, he had a Fusoya deck. He was playing uh, Water Lightning Fusoya, and I played my Uranger, targeted mm-hmm. Layak, and he, I said response. He said, nope. I'm like, all right, play it. End of my turn, he shot my Uranger. After the game, I told him, like, dude, why didn't you do that? If you knew you were going to do that anyway, why didn't you just shoot him so I didn't get the Layak back? He's like, oh, that's yeah. how that works? It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people just don't see the mill coming either. Like, they, they legit right. just like, oh, you recouped me once. It's like, no big deal. It's like, well, like, that gonna, yeah, but I haven't cast any Diablos yet, and we're gonna start mm-hmm. on top of our backups, and things are gonna start getting really gross. The deck the, does like you have to mill too. If you don't, you're yeah. gonna deck out because you search so much, you draw yeah. a ton of extra cards with Layak. Yeah. Like you actually, it's kind of just essential for you not to lose by decking because a lot it, of times it is important to wait to play your Layaks until you have a Riku. I think for the most that's part, that's probably accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been liking the addition of like one pain, like the first list had. Um, yeah. I like that guy's decision to do that to go find the Riku. So the, the, I, I I think what people are missing though is that the reason like the mill deck is doing well isn't necessarily even because of Riku. It's because people haven't played Magic enough to know what it's like to have all of your CP available during your opponent's turn. Right. Um, and also all your characters available. Like being able to untap and have all your fours available is just really really good. Um, yeah, it's like playing with prop group. It makes it makes cards like the seven drop Odin mm-hmm. playable. It makes cards like the seven drop Phoenix a lot more playable. Uh, yep. It makes the four drop Odin better. It makes uh, four drop Exodus better. It, it makes all like, these cards you much can, better. You can have the seven drop Phoenix is the last card in your hand with five backups and pass a turn, and you can cast down their turn because when they attack, you're drawing a card. Yeah. So you can just pitch whatever that card is, dull five and I mean, Phoenix. So I, like was, I always I always draw Kefka, so no. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> no, like always. Uh, most of the time. <laughs> yeah, um, it feels like that. Statistically, you're going to be able yeah. to cast the Phoenix, but so it is. Um, so I'll say this: it was the deck that I was considering most for Kansas. Um, mm-hmm. The more I play it, the less I'm considering it, though, because it does seem to me that the more people play against it, the harder it is to do well. Like, if if you know what you're doing, it's very hard to lose to that deck. It feels like, or yeah, to lose to that deck. I don't know if I agree with that. I think the deck's just very powerful. Like it, it's doing powerful things when piloted well and not dead drawn. Like as long as your beginning but is it not, can, but it can lose to itself so things. easily. It and can. you know, I would say that like I've reached out to like six or seven different people that have played the deck to inquire about their losses, how they did, blah blah blah. Every one of them is like, "Oh, my loss in the Swiss was Mono Water. My loss in the semifinals was Mono Water. My loss in the finals was Mono Water." If you ask people like Akimoto what the best deck is right now, their answer is that it's Mono Water Monsters. I, I just feel uncomfortable taking that into a, an environment where Mono Water might be the best deck. I, mm-hmm. I honestly, so I have only lost with a deck in the mirror, um, and I, and I think that I haven't played Mono Water once. So right. without any testing, I'm. I'm going to tend to like err on the side of like, well, everyone I talk to who's played the deck a lot is struggling with Mono Water. I think I'm going to trust them that it's a bad matchup. I was thinking about trying out Mono Water Monsters. I haven't played it yet because it, it, it feels very comfortable because I've played a oh. lot of Monsters decks. I've played a lot of Water. Like I, I get the idea of what the deck's trying to do, and I've, yeah. I've played through that flow before, so I think I'm okay with it. No pun intended. Yeah. On <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I think I've, I've, I'll probably pick it up one of these weeks so we can, we can jam that. But, yeah. uh, to, to, I guess to answer the question though is like why is that deck doing so well right now is like sure. it's first off it's really exciting it's a fun deck so mm-hmm. everyone who saw it immediately picked it up uh, all the best players are going to do well with the deck because they're going to play against right. people that don't know what's going on um, so you're going to see the deck do well 
That being said, in an environment where you're looking to just top eight, it might be a fine deck. Uh, when you're looking to win a best of three to proceed to top four, or if you're playing in the the Indy or the California Cup yeah. where you need a top two essentially, um, then I yeah I taking that into the best of three format um, doesn't seem like a yeah. good idea to me. Actually, it's you know, a... actually the Crystal Cups might even be top sixteen cut, so you have to win two matches best of three before qualifying. So it's like best three overhand. I'd rather play a much more consistent deck like Mono Ice, Mono Lightning, Mono Water. Um, right. But I, I, let's just say I do have it, you know, I, I don't know where it is. I think it's like right here. Yeah, right. I've got it with an arm's reach over here. So. Yeah, it's not <laughs> oh, in wow. it. I, I do have it Focus. somewhere. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have the deck sleeved mm -hmm. up, and I will like continue to test it. Uh, I'm just not like sold on it for best of three format. It's definitely an enjoyable deck to tinker with, too. Like, there's so much variability you can put into it. I'm yeah. not going to go into all the stuff we've tried, but like you can pretty much take the core of it, yeah. which is, you know, the Star Sybil, the Cam, the Chaos, the Uranger, the Layak, uh, your ways to get Uranger back, which yeah. whatever way you choose to do that, whether it's Phoenix or whatever else, and then just put in fun cards that go well with them in those same colors, and you're probably going to find some success. <laughs> like, yeah, like I, I, being able to recur things so much, you know, your injury get back Layak, or like something to get back your injury, like Phoenix, to, like an OS to get your Layak back. It's, just, it's the consistency and like that, just the constant synergy is why it's so powerful. You're there Monday, right? Yes. Yeah, I threw three Gal into the deck and four out our, and, and four out our local event. Yeah, no, Gal, Gal seems sweet for it. Yeah, so like you get, uh, there's, a, a lot, a there's a lot of room to play around with. Kinda. Yeah, there's a lot of room to play with. Um, and the uh, the I played the Lucid Dreaming deck in two events now. I undefeated the first one. It was only three rounds, so it was a very small locals. Uh, deck felt good. Uh, second event, uh, deck was still good. Um, I think I misplayed once or twice, but also and you made some I changes to it too. Nope, I didn't touch it. Um, oh, you I, didn't. Okay. I took no, no. I want to play at least two events with it without. I like to do two events okay. without touching a deck before I start tinkering. Yeah, that's funny. Um, I, like, I like to do zero. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever but, played someone's fifty. But the, I the whole time I was playing it, I was sitting there like I just kind of wish I was. I had these other cards like like Dadaluma. Like, yeah, like I wish I had Dadaluma and Cactor yeah. and like all these other tricks and like I think it's playing Diablos, but like. It's not. No, it's not playing Diablos. Seven, like I wanted Diablos. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, it it felt very good as a control, you know, Lulu control mill deck. But I just yeah, it's a cool deck. Yeah, it's it, it's different, yeah. but I definitely felt some similarity when I was. I think I might have misplayed it because I was trying to play it too much like the mill deck. Like I was trying to get the layak value, and maybe that just wasn't correct. Right. Yeah, I don't think it is. Like you're not. Yeah. Like getting back, getting getting back a Uranger with Fasoya is not like nearly as good as like getting back a Zidane. Right. And just Zidane them out of their answers. Oh, Mion and Zidane was the oh, dirtiest yeah. thing in the world. It felt so good. So we'll move on to uh, uh, what are the types of cards you build around? Um, types yeah. or names? <laughs> uh, I think both. I Like for me, like I want to build around like cool cards that do interesting things um, or powerful things. Like in the case, like I would like I want to currently build around Zemus a lot. Like I love not the not the backup, although that, next, that thing that backup is pretty cool. But like the lightning Zemus. And I want to build around cards like Laylac a lot. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in my Gao deck, I had three Flanets in my Laylac deck, and I would just be like, tap three Flanets, make your guy either pay three to attack, and they're like, okay, I'll pay three to attack. I'm like, untap my thing, because you got to pay three more to attack your other guy. Like, Very good at popping Illua, too. Oh, yeah, Flanda, your Illua. Oh, right. got countered. I was doing that quite a bit. <laughs> so those are the, the, the cool interactions. Like, Fl Flanda's a cool card I like to build around. I also like to build around really strong cards, like, uh, Cognazzo is you know always fun to build around. Vaughn. Right now, my wife is uh, playing like a, a lightning fire deck that she has. I think made the top cut of every event she's played in it with. Mm -hmm. Um, and I recently added Vaughn to list because the deck just has a lot of haste and like ways to like right. push through. Sage. It, yeah, it just seems like a like a really cool thing. So for me, I like like if I'm building a deck, I'm I don't I'm not taking like a bunch of cards and trying to build around them, like. For example, Wall. Wall is obviously like extremely strong, right? But like, it's not the kind of card that I want to build around. I, and I don't know. I don't know why that is. Um, whereas like Laylac is the kind of card I want to build around. Yeah. Uh, Cleone is the type of card I want to build around. 
um, like these cool little gladiator, you know, like these are the types of cards I will try to build around. My deck will usually have like 15 different combos that are like really bad, um, but maybe those combos are enough to like win my matches, and they tend to be. Um, right, right. Whereas like, you know, some of these other players are just playing very consistent good decks, and maybe that's the better place to be. Like maybe like we should just be playing Wind, Water, Jund, as Zach likes to call it. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. What about you, Zach? I know you tend to play around some really bad cards yourself. <laughs> I, I like to either build around a very powerful engine that's mm -hmm. maybe hard to set up. Like Archfiends, I've been a huge fan of in the past. Uh, if they get going, they can do very powerful things yeah. and kind of unfair things at times, like dropping Golbez for free. But I also like... I think I think I like playing decks that lose to Yuna H. Uh <laughs> Things that constantly, like, you know, they're dying, coming back. That Like, Skarmiglione is a card I've built around a lot. I've really enjoyed uh, playing that. Um, let's see. Other, like, dumb effects, like, just, like, weird devout stuff where, like, I'm sacrificing things to devout it back again in the same turn. And, like, just weird engines like that that like, accrue value over, like, critical mass. So, like, I get to a point where I just have this little interactive engine going that's going to, like, grind you out. So that's actually why I like the mill deck, right? Because okay, it's yeah. that, but good. <laughs> uh, but no, Archfiends has been one. Um, singleton decks, that's fun. <laughs> but that's not an actual thing. Uh, I'm trying to think of... Can you think of any cards that I've built around recently that I uh, can't remember right now? Um, you like uh, the Warmech, right? Have you, but you haven't tried the deck yet? Oh, yeah, Gilgamesh Cannon, yep. So I like trying to abuse, <laughs> ever since Opus 3, the... Uh, but that's similar, the, right? Like, you want to abuse, like, this smaller card to make this bigger card, like, better? Yeah, exactly. Like, like power... Uh, Moomba. Moomba I love building around. <laughs> exactly, right? The, but those are the cool, the fun cards to build around, I think, are, like, the smaller power level decks, and you put them into existing archetypes. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah, think like, I, Moomba, with any sort of, like, the summoner effect, or, like, yeah. Red Mage target your guy, he takes 1k more, and 2 CP kill your guy. Like, sweet. Yeah, or, like, just Cactar. Yeah, or Cactor. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are the types of lists that uh, are cards that, I like, that we like to build around at least. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and Usually it's, bad cards, because otherwise I'm not building around it, I'm actually, like, building a deck and, like, playing it consistently, but just, like, brewing around, yeah, usually bad cards. Yeah. Um, as far as lists go, we already highlighted um, a lot of the lists um, when I was scrolling through with uh, Fasoya winning first and second place with, Mo with Monster, or Modern Water wearing third place. Um, in the most recent event. Uh, I think Bot, uh, Bond's Corner just released a video today, which was really cool. He talked about his uh, Wind Water deck. Um, if, if a lot of people are asking me, like, what deck are you playing right now? Right now I'm playing the Mill deck. Um, if I were to move into a new deck, it might be the Wind Water deck. I think that mm -hmm. deck's pretty cool. Um, so if you're looking for a deck to try out, that deck, you know, Zach calls it the Jund of the format of Final Fantasy, and that's basically the Jund is a reference to magic where, like, it's just the standard deck that beats things if you're trying to be unfair. Um, it basically has no match. Right. It's like either no bad matchups or it's like a 55-45 kind of thing. It's like right. if you draw, you have answers for everything, you have just good threats. Well, now you, now you have answers for everything. Right, right. Because now you have your Stola for Shintaro. Yeah, yeah. Your, your top decks are typically stronger than your opponents. Uh, just your cards have good value. They're individually powerful. Yeah. They also work well together. But there's nothing over the top. There's nothing crazy going on. You're just playing a fair game of solid Final Fantasy. Yeah, and, and you're that's, taking cards like, out of your opponent's hand too with Zidane, like you are thought seizing your opponent with Jones. Right, yeah. Like yeah. you're you're grinding them out and you're out resourcing them, two for wanting them. That's, that's exactly that's what it feels like to play Water Wind. Uh and most mm -hmm. of the decks that I play tend to like uh OTK someone. Um it, it, that's just the way I am. Or I'm either playing an OTK deck or I'm playing like a Riku Mill deck. Oh, um, also, like you just said uh, earlier, it it's the one that also kind of controls the unfair decks. So anything yes. that's trying to go too over the top, it'll just be like, uh, okay, hit you with these guys. You're going to try a player card. I'm going to answer it. And then well, you're it has, it has Emperor, it has Zidane, it has Ishtola. It has a whole bunch of ways to like stop you from doing your unfair things. Mm -hmm. um, it has like, it's high end. Yeah. There's a bunch if you're of trying like, to one freeze ups. all their stuff, they have like parts. They have, um, not, a, not a sir, it has... Um, Self has so just I think I want to say it had um the back the back the two mana back the two CP backup that also untaps your two dudes. 
Uh, I didn't see Barrel Eye in there. It did, but... it did. Uh, in in uh, Bond's deck, it had it. Oh, Bond's deck, sure. Yeah, and uh, then, I'm about it. I'm he's also played Diablos. So, like, mm -hmm. waste on top of your guys. So, if, if, you're, if, if you're playing against Ice, trying to do unfair things to you with, like, Orphan and whatnot. That deck does seem really cool. And that's the deck that I would, I would move into. The... Like, someone had a gun to my head and said, you have to win your next event. Otherwise, like, bad things are going to happen. I'd be like, all right, all right. Wind water, let's go. Like, <laughs> see, and see, that's not where I would be. See, I'm kind of the opposite. If someone said you had to win your next event, I the last deck I would play is Wind Water. Uh, really? Yeah, I, I, I think if, if, if the if the question was you have to top eight your next event, oh, I'd that's play, different. I would play Wind Water. I want, really? I want to, yeah. I, so in in my top matches, I like to be objectively powerful. I want to be able to beat them without them having much to do. And if and if I have a bad hand, I have a bad hand. I can I can fall back and lose that match and win the next one. Car decks like Wind Water are so consistent, but yet do nothing insanely powerful. Right. So you're that's just gonna exactly grind. What right, well, that's what I'm So you're gonna grind out your opponents, and then you can beat the decks that are just gonna normally just try to like kill people in one turn, or if they're trying to grind you out, you have great resources to grind them back out. You have, like Riku and. You just waste on tap your dudes and, and force like awkward combat for them. Um, right. That, so I'm gonna win on average those normal matches against the normal decks. But in my top eight, like I don't want to lose to the the guy who just like I don't know, like the guy the, the guy who prepared and built the built the deck that is gonna beat the average deck. I don't know how to really explain it to be honest with you. I was say it sounds like the opposite of what you're saying earlier, where it's like you want to be on something like Mill that's doing objectively powerful things. But you didn't want to play it in top either. Like, <laughs> I don't. No, no, no. But see, that's the difference. I want to play something that does something like like Mill can be Mill is different than like okay. For example, in last Gold last Kansas I played Golbez is something that I would play in it. I would play in the event and would be comfortable in top eight because if they don't have it, they don't have it. Like if mm -hmm. they're not playing the Uno or the Shantoto, they just don't have it. Right? You're right. just going to beat them. Um, I, of course, you can still lose. You can still lose to like a well timed Shiva. There's there's definitely ways you can lose. I'm not saying that Golbez is broken. But Golbaz is the type of deck that I want to play even in a best of two situation. Because right. like they, they just some of the sometimes they just don't have the cards to beat the Golbaz, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I just I feel like the differences with water wind, um like most of those guys aren't playing Minwoo, for example. So like you you play their guy and if it's not if it's not Ishtola, they're gonna they're gonna I'll sit it and then like how you how you win against their Alua? Mm -hmm. It's like really hard. Like I don't I never want to play a deck again that loses to Alua. <laughs> so fair. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. I, I I think if Mono Lightning is the most played deck, like I will hope to just lose my one match to it in the Swiss and just, but like if I get paired against it in the top eight. Or the top sixteen, like I'm just not being, I'm not beating Lua in the best of best of three when they have Sid of Clan Gully and Lua or whatever. Like, God right, forbid right. they actually also have Adele. Like <laughs> that card is the biggest heartbreak. Like you're, man, I got you ground out, man. You you can't get past my wall, and they just go Adele, and you're like, all right, well. Yeah, <laughs> I was here? on the old on the old monster deck. I was actually at. Like, uh, I was at 52 and 2 win rate, or 54 and 2 win rate. I was, like, really, really good. I was like, really good about the deck. Um, and then I just lost to, like, turn 1, Adele. Attack you. Next turn, attack you. Next turn, make it so it can't be blocked, attack you. Next turn, play Vaughn, give it haste, attack you. And I was dead. I was just like, what the heck? <laughs> like, yeah, so... I just I I don't want to I I think that wind water has a has a problem with the Lua. I don't know I, I could be wrong I could be wrong uh, if you think I'm wrong tell me why I can't imagine I'm thinking about like the cards that like Bond played for example like if you have Cloud of Darkness sure you can break the you can break the first trigger for free but like other than that I would say like, the opposite I was gonna say like maybe he had Time Berries and then Cloud of Darkness after or something well it works well I'm saying you can you can attack with Cloud of Darkness to break right. the, the shield for free. But like maybe you're dead by the time you're attacking with your five drop. Or you target it with self to pop it, then play Cloud of Darkness, kill it. You probably got three guys. Yeah, sure. It does play oh, four. They're gonna play Lulu. Yeah, I don't remember how many self he plays, but sure. Yeah, I guess you could Two. you could self his guy and then pop it with what your Diablos. 
Like, how, yeah, kill like, with something, yeah. Exactly. Like, you still don't have, like, a clean way to kill it. Maybe, like, some of those guys are playing the unit Chaos Walker. Um, right. Yeah, I don't know. I guess my point is just, like, I don't want to lose to, like, Alua, and I think that deck does. But, right. Hmm. I don't know. I think I think Bond also you see he he knows more though. He he had posted that he thought he had a pretty good matchup against it. Um despite mm-hmm. losing to it. And I think he also did beat it. Um but yeah, I just I just can't imagine like I maybe I just don't have the play skill to beat Alua. Plus like <laughs> if, if you're playing like the um the Lucid Dreaming deck with a uh, Dell also, like, I'm just, I'm never beating that deck. Right. On Wind Water you mean? Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. I mean, I don't know that I've ever played one water in an event. Uh, that, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. I can't think. I mean, I've you played wind water I've lost to it a lot. Yeah, you I played. played you played wind water Fusoya back in Opus. I did. Okay, I did play wind water Fusoya. The yeah. end of Opus three before we were on like the three or four color one. I did. Yeah. No, and I played in Opus four. I was gonna play the Tampa Petite Cup. I chickened out at the last minute. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, that's true. I've played it when you add Fasoya and a bunch of cards that facilitate it. Right. <laughs> yeah. That was a cute deck. Anyway, do you have anything else to add? Uh, no, I think we covered all that. We finally talked about the mill deck and we've yeah. been avoiding talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you guys have any more questions, so go ahead and shoot us uh, just a message on Facebook or whatever Absolutely. it is. Uh, if you comment maybe on we YouTube, do... I'll probably never see it, but maybe you'll never yeah. see it. I don't know. And uh, we could do maybe this kind of thing, like we'll compile questions and like once we get to like a kind of a, a good amount of them, that's enough to, you know, cover a podcast length. Yeah. Uh, we can do this again, mm-hmm. like talk about what anyone else wants to hear or just sound off in the comments. We can answer there. But, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, no, this is fun. I like yeah. this. Anyway, uh, thanks for uh, joining us for uh, episode 16. Uh, we'll be back next week. Um, I don't think that we have a major event this week. Uh, so I, I don't. Pro- think so i will probably just tell you how wind water went for me because i think i'm actually going to try it um right yeah until then i'm sam riley and i'm zach burrell and we'll catch you guys later see ya